Mark, you spent a career in the Navy as a submariner and as an anti-submarine warfare uh, officer. Tell me a little bit about the technology you had back then on submarines to find other submarines. So I spent my career uh, when I was active on the submarines in the Cold War. In the Cold War, uh, we tried to detect submarines by simply listening with very sensitive listening equipment. It was called passive sonar. Uh, and that I spent most of my career uh, in the Cold War uh, uh, challenging uh, and deterring uh, near to peer competitors in that environment. Um, in, in the post-Cold War area, uh, era, the near peer competitors have uh, more uh, diesel submarines. They've got uh, uh, submarines that are very, very quiet and uh, anti-submarine warfare has become more dependent on at what's called active ASW. Active ASW is what, you're, what you associate with in the World War II movies. There's a ping that comes from the submarine or the ship and it bounces off the target and comes back as a, as a received uh, signal. Uh, and we're going, the Navy's going back towards that uh, type of ASW warfare because of the current conditions in the world. As I understand it right now, the the sensors to locate submarines are, are mounted on the bow of a ship, but this goes a little bit beyond that. How, how does the CAPTIS-4 work? In the Cold War, uh, we mounted the active systems. These are the systems that ping and then listen for a return, like, like you see in the World War II movies, directly onto the bow of the ship. And therefore, it, when you emit the noise or the sound, it, it, you're locked into the fact that it's at a certain depth of the ocean. These variable depth sonar systems allow you to lower off the stern the vehicle that makes the noise and you can put it in the water column at the depth that makes it best or most efficient at detecting targets. So it could be 50 feet, could be at 300 feet, could be at 600 feet. Um, that's dictated by the physics and the physics are actually predicted as part of the mission planning for sonar. And so the operators would put this at the optimal depth for the longest range detection of submarines actively. That is, the sound goes to the target and bounces all the way back to you and you can hear it. And are you currently under contract with, with the Navy for, for any of this? Yes, we are. Um, we uh, are under a subcontract to Fincanteri, who's building the Constellation class frigate. Uh, the first hull number is FFG 62. Uh, this system that we have here, it will, our first system for that platform, uh, will be delivered in November. And the first uh, ship of the class Constellation will go to sea in the t 2026 time frame. Uh, there will be uh, the, sub the current uh, build build plan for the Navy is to build them at, at one a year, then two, then one a year, and two a year, and so forth. So it's one, two, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two. And we'll be producing these systems at that same rate. And at what point are you going to go beyond beyond that, that initial frigate with Fincantonary? Well, two things could happen. One is the United States Navy could decide that they need more frigates, more ASW capacity, uh, more uh, frigate uh, capability. If that's the case, then of course Congress will authorize building more ships per year. Uh, arguably, uh, the plan is uh, in the shipbuilding plan is to have more platforms than that build rate would otherwise supply. So we AAC are anticipating a higher build rate based on the numbers of ships procured by Congress. So if you were back being a submarine captain, but this time with an adversary's navy, what would you think about this kind of system? Well, if you're asking me as a target, and, and submarines are a target of, of enemy activity, this system scares the dickens out of me. Uh, and the reason, there are two reasons for that. One is it's a very long range system. Uh, it may sound like a very distant signal to me, but it could have contact on me. And of course that's uh, you know, in, inherently dangerous for submariner to be detected because they, they can be attacked. Um, the other piece of this is that if you uh, distribute this system the way the Navy's gonna distribute fires, uh, it could be that the one making the noise and the one receiving the signal were two different vessels. I would only be able to hear the one making the signal. I wouldn't know where the one that was listening for the signal was, and that could be the one that attacks me. And so as a submariner, this is a very scary scenario to me, and the United States should be proud of the fact that I think they're taking advantage of that uh, in defense of the U.S. as opposed to me being a target. And we think of submarines as something from the Cold War, but they're still very out there and active today. What's the environment like right now? The, uh, the environment has changed because the near-peer competitors have changed, and so our tactics and procedures and some of our systems have, um, have evolved uh, to meet that threat. What is very public and in congressional record even is the, the vital role that the submarine, submarines play in the initial um, deterrence of a near-peer competitor. Uh, and in fact, you'd note probably that 
Congress would rather build more submarines than we're currently building uh, if they had their druthers. Uh, right now, we're somewhat, our industrial base is somewhat limited by a Cold War build rate, which was very, very low. So how has it changed? It's changed that just like in World War II, the first community to oppose uh, aggression in the Pacific was the submarine community. Remember, it was unrestricted war, submarine war was declared by the president, and every submarine that we had basically moved to the Pacific and took the fight to the enemy. Really, it's that, that art piece of art of warfare has not changed at all. We'd be the first ones to fight furthest forward with the submarine community. Well, thank you so much for having us over. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure to have you today, and I'm great to talk to you.